is our last example for this um, particular unit. So the initial population of rabbits on a fence was 50. Um, the population increased by 7% each week. So is that a geometric sequence or an arithmetic sequence? A geometric. Geometric, yeah. Yeah, get, exactly, perfect. Yeah, geometric, because you've got a rabbit. Increase by 7% each week. Um, what would be a U of 1? 50, yeah. But that's exactly it's the initial population. U of 1 is 50. And what's our common ratio? Close? Did you say 0 plus 0 is 7? Really, really close? You're thinking like that? Because remember, it's all relative to 100%. So what's 100 plus that if it's increased by 7%? 0 plus 0 is yeah, yeah, exactly, 1.07. So that's what we're thinking of in terms of rate, like relative to 100%. If it was a decrease by 7%, it'd go down by 7%. Yeah, there'd be 93. Yeah, there'd be 93, yeah, exactly. So 0.93 would be the rate here if it was a decrease. Um, so yeah, remember, it's always relative to 100%. 100% keeps it sort of stable. And then if it increases by 7, 1.07. Um, Right, um, how many rabbits were present after 15 weeks? So according to this one, what's our N? Yeah, N is 15. And just check, is it about weeks or is it about months or is it about years? And they do say each week. So those two questions are nice and straightforward. We just have to apply the formula. The only issue really with that one would be is if you applied the wrong formula. So do they want to know the U of N or the sum? Okay. Wait, how long would it take for the population to reach? Oh, this one, yeah, A. So how many yeah. rabbits are present after? In the 15th, after 15 weeks? It's not the, it's the other one. Yeah, it's a U of N. Because it is a tough one in terms of this one. Like, is it the U of N or is it the sum? Like, they want to know like, how many <laughs> rabbits in 15 weeks. So look to think of the sequence. The sequence itself, the U of N itself, tells you what the total number of rabbits was um, in this case. So it's not like, you know, there was... Um, 50 rabbits and then there was, um, they all died, like, you know, they all ran away and came back and then there was another 57 rabbits or 53.5 rabbits. It's more like, you know, the total population. So the total population is following that sequence, 50 and 53.5 and then something and so on, if that makes any sense at all. So the U of N in this case is giving us already what the total population is, which is hard to see. Um, also, oh, that's right, and remember, uh, um, this happened a bit for geometric sequences last week. Remember that for geometric sequences, word problems often need to consider the context of the problem and use values of n, which might be one more than we usually would. Oh, so they usually excluded? Yeah, remember sometimes we had to think, okay, so it's the beginning of the um, 16th year then, that kind of stuff. So, because remember our formula is u of 1 after the n minus 1, um, and sometimes, so after 15 weeks, it's like we've multiplied by 1.07 15 times. So you could, instead of using this formula, just use u of 1 to the power of r, and then instead of n minus 1, you might have to use 15. So this was a problem last week, um, last week, and in um, geometric problems in particular, um, had this issue, where in terms of like the number of years or the number of weeks, we've actually instead got to use that number instead of n minus 1. So it sometimes happens in geometric word problems. Because um, when you think of it, uh, so it starts off with 50. So if you start off with 50, um, after that's an, at time zero. So after one week, multiply 1.07. After two weeks, you would have times that by 1.07 again. After three weeks, by 1.07 again, which in that case is u of 1 equals r to the power. That's where everyone changes u of 1. u of n. So U of 3, for example, would be um, the initial population of 1.07 to the 3, not 3 minus 1. Because notice you split it after 3 weeks, so that's at time 0. So 1 week after 2 weeks after 3 weeks. So in that case, it makes more sense that you're times it or raising it to the power of 3, not to the power of 3 minus 1. Um. Yeah, so sometimes feel free to like kind of map this out if it's something about in the number of weeks and it's a geometric sequence, you might want to have a little experiment and think, does it make sense to do 3 minus 1? And in this case, no, it doesn't, because 
the number of times we multiply it by 1.06 and it has to be used to explain that. Or else we'll be one week short. Um, so you probably have some people using that. Um, so instead we're going to, have to do, so you can either think of it as just to the power of 15 or to the power of 16 minus 1. It's like the beginning of the 16th week. Did you, someone have a question? Deb, can you explain here why it, why we don't subtract one? Yeah, exactly, why we don't subtract one when the formula normally is subtract one. Um, so say that if it was in three weeks time, so sometimes have a little think about it. So what if it was in one week time or in three weeks time? So 50 was almost at time zero rather than at time one, wasn't it? So after one, that's at time zero, so after one week, it would have to have been 50 times 1.07. And then after two weeks, that answer times 1.07 again. And after three weeks has passed, it's that answer times 1.07 again. And if you were to write that kind of as a formula, it'd be 50 times 1.07 to the power of 3. Oh, okay. Yeah, so after three weeks, you'll need an exponent of 3. Yeah, so if you're having trouble, like these are big numbers, so you don't have to write out that 15 times. But you could experiment with thinking, okay, if it was two weeks or three weeks, what would it have to be? If I did it manually, how would it look? That kind of thing. So sometimes it that tends to, some, where you do see this problem tends to be with um, geometric um, word problems. Not so much, I don't see it so much with arithmetic. Um, so basically in 15 weeks, so you could almost think that in 16, if you want. If we can just change it, it looks like 16. It looks like 15 looks like 16. And in a sense, we might need to think of n is 31. So you could use that green version of the formula I have there. Or you could just go straight to saying the exponent has to be the number of weeks. That's more so makes sense. And do you get something like 137 point something? It wouldn't and still be. Yeah, if you use the green version of the formula, like the one that's in the formula booklet, then try to think of it as being at the beginning of the 16th week. If that makes sense, maybe that's a way to remember it. That's the beginning of the 16th week. Or if you think of it manually, you just think, okay, the number of times the exponent has to be um, the number of weeks. And then, yep, that's correct. You got 137.95 dot, 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 dot. So they're asking how many, therefore how many all rabbits would have been present because it's the number of rabbits. Yeah, so 137 rabbits. So in this case, because it's a word problem, we need to kind of think of um, the context of the problem. And this is AI. Let's do. So same thing, we just need to plug it in. So if it helps you, say at the beginning of the 31st week. In that case, it would have been with n equals 50 times 1.07 to the power of 30, which is 31 minus 1, which is 30. Feel free to definitely practice plugging it into your calculator so you get used to plugging in exponents and all that kind of thing in accurately. Does anyone get something like 380 something? context of the problem we only have 380 live rabbits and it's really close <laughs> now we're going to have one where we're going to need to solve for n how long would it take for the population to reach 500 so what um, in the formula what in the formula does the 500 represent u of n good yeah so u of n in that case let's work that off B, so according to that, our U of N equals 500, U of 1 is still just 50, R is 1.07, they want to work out what our N is. So we can still use that same green formula. Okay. Um, right, yeah, so we can go 500 plus U of 
1.50 times 1.07. You can't have a quarter to our formula, it's kind of more like to the power of n, isn't it? Or you could write n minus 1 and then just add 1 to your answer at the end. Um, so how would you start to solve for that? Would you deal with the 50 or the 1.07? Yeah, 50, yeah. What would you do to... And 5 times you divide by 50 is? 10. 10. So we're kind of getting to the point where we might have to um, use a calculator. So if we, what's one way we can use our calculator to solve for this, right from this point here? Or from that point? Yeah, we could use log to solve or we could graph. Um, yeah, let's do log, yeah. Let's practice our log. So unfortunately, 1.07 is not enough necessarily a nice number that we can use, um, do it with by hand, but we can still do a bit of log. Um, okay, so how would, what will we do first, by the way? We're ready to apply our log. Yep, good. All right, we can take the log of both of those. So log 10. People like to go straight to doing this business. You're welcome to do that if you want. You can go straight to log 10 equals n log 127. I just put them on the floor. In green Log D. Log 10. What is log 10? One. Yeah, log 10 is 1, isn't it? Because log, the regular base of the log is 10. And 10 to the power of what equals 10? A number. Do you get a whole number or do you get a decimal? Three point zero three. I mean, sorry, yeah. Three four three zero three. Three four point three zero three. Yeah. Um, so in this case, remember n has to be an integer. Do we need to round it up or do we need to round it down? Uh, uh, yeah, correct. Because what the question was, um, after how many weeks? Will it have reached 500? So oh. at 34 weeks, it won't have reached 500. It'll be just under. So you're right. In this case, in the context, we need to round up. 35 weeks. So lots of having to read the context of the problem and make decisions based on it. That's a good point, because yeah, if you're just thinking of regular rounding, then it would round to 34 weeks, wouldn't it? So it is tough where it's in these word problems, it's, you're always having to think of the context of the problem, which makes it a bit trickier. And it's like a sequence that's kind of increasing, sort of like exponentially, a bit like this. And so at 34 weeks, it's probably just under 500. So at 34 weeks, well, maybe we needed to reach 500, and at 34 weeks it'll probably be just under. Okay. Yeah. But in 35, it'll be over 500. So that's the thing. So to be on the safe side, they might actually prefer the answer of 34.032. That's an exact answer. But in the context of the problem, n has to be n has to be kind of like a, a whole number if we're talking about sequences. But it is possible to get 34.032 weeks. Like that's just like yeah, 34 weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So in terms of time, it is actually possible to get something like 34 for these three two. So to be on the safe side, what I was going to do is I would leave the unrounded answer and also include it at the end. And then in a way you've covered yourself, because quite often in exams, the examiners are told, if you see the correct answer somewhere to mark it, give it a tick. So by writing both, you're covered, because examiners are given a bit of flexibility, where even though you might have quoted that as your answer, if they can see that in your working, you're allowed to mark that as correct. If that, if 34.032 was considered the correct answer. Or round it to 366.34.032. Write all possible answers, you think. Yeah, at some point you're going to have to quote a particular answer and write it in the answer spot. But yeah, as I said, like they can be told, if you see this answer anywhere, mark that one as correct. So I would go with that.